Now, I totally and completely understand when it comes to professional wrestling that not everything is for me. Not everything is about me. And I know for some of you that comes across as kind of funny. You're saying, wait, but you're a Caucasian. Everything is always for you. That's the way this world works. And yes, that's messed up, but I digress. Because it's, it, it's fucked up how that works out. But my point is, wrestling, one of the great things about it is there's something for everyone. And you know, there are different levels to this. There can be wrestlers that I'm really, really a fan of their work. Wrestlers I think are solid. Wrestlers I'm okay with, but they're not really my cup of tea. Wrestlers I'm not huge on. And then wrestlers I absolutely loathe. And some of you know who those are. Memphis mid-card pieces of crap, etc. But an example of like somebody, I say, okay, this is a solid talent. Um, it's like a ricochet. He's not great on the mic. Lots of other guys do similar crap to him. But I know he works hard. Like, he probably does the best he can. He seems like a decent dude. Hardworking guy. All, the, all that stuff, right? Like, there's not a reason to hate him for me, per se. It's not like he's... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler who's been ripping off the WWE of a shit ton of money for a long period of time. Phoning it in and never fucking getting any better. I view Ricochet in part as a victim of like circumstance because so many people work the same type of style. WWE doesn't really do a good job of presenting him in a way that really makes him stand out, etc. So if I see a Ricochet on TV, I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? Just like, it's not like freaking Roman Reigns in the bloodline. It's not like LA Knight or somebody like that. But I don't hate or detest him like some other guys. But I gotta say, when it comes to fucking Matt Riddle, I've never gotten it. I don't get it now. And I never will. And that is perfectly fine with me. Because I can't stand that son of a bitch. And I don't understand why so many fans like this fucking dude. Like, what the hell is it? What's the fucking appeal here? Like, third-rate Down Syndrome Rod Van Dam? What the fuck is the appeal here? Seriously. Oh, dude, he walks out and says, bro, bro, bro. So he's Vince Russo, and Vince Russo was a fucking surfer and 25 years younger. The fuck? Like, somebody has been accused of having a punchable face, and I probably do. It takes one to know one. That dude has an incredibly punchable face. And when you look at some of the shit that he's been accused of, and accused of, and accused of over the years, you understand just how punchable of a face he might fucking have. Like, what is the appeal? Why is Matt Riddle a thing? I don't get it. I will never get it. And I don't want to get it. This is to me like people trying to pretend that Charlotte Flair is a good talent. No, she's fucking not. She's over for us. Da, da, da. This video's not com meant to complain about that botchy bitch, but she does and always will suck. Matt Riddle's the same thing. Like the freaking barefoot crap. It looks stupid and ridiculous. His ring gear sucks. He comes out to the ring and he does his little plie. Fucking showing all the world this boy pussy. What the fuck? Never mind the fact that isn't this a dude that got accused of abuse by a couple of different women, accused of rape or sexual assault by one of them, and now on the heels of the WWE and UFC being part of this big merger with Endeavor to become one big TKO entity, here's this jackass getting himself into hot water in an incident at JFK Airport where reportedly, well, not reportedly for the first part, he sits there and posts something on social media, including a picture of one of the, the airport cops talking about they violated him and sexually assaulted him. And then as more information comes out, he's you're finding out reports, allegedly, that this dude was highly drunk and highly fucking intoxicated. So... This dude not only couldn't control himself, but then puts himself and his company in a really bad freaking spot 
at a time where the company absolutely cannot and does not need to be bothered by something like this. Like, aren't we in a spot with WWE that you just don't need to be bothered with headaches like this? You know, like from the dipshit one time in a backstage segment, totally forgetting his line and just being like, oh, man, man, I, I forgot what I was going to say. And he walked off like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> no, that's fucking not. Like, that's typical. Is this is dude even been fired by like UFC and Bellator before. Might as well go for like some type of triple crown and get in future endeavored by Endeavor, WWE. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious though. Like, why is this guy a thing? What does he do that hundreds of other people in the wrestling business can't? What is it? He's certainly not the only one smoking the ganja nowadays. We know that. He sure as hell isn't that. And that whole stoner gimmick, like, you're looking at him, you're saying, oh, this is Sean Penn, fast times at Ridgemont High, but all the non-redeeming fucking qualities of him. Like, of all the wrestlers that people could like, the fuck is wrong with you if you like this dude? I'm sorry. And even if you say, well, I really like the RK Bro tag team. Really? Well, that hasn't been a thing for quite a while. So what else you got? I don't recall this dude's matches lighting the world on fire. I don't recall his promos doing anything compelling or interesting to move the needle. I don't recall any of his character work or any of the stories he'd been in being incredibly compelling. Now, seriously, again, it feels like a broken fucking record, but sometimes you got to repeat this shit to get it to sink in. Why is Matt Riddle a goddamn thing? Why do people like this guy? And why does it seem like with this dude at some point in time, it's always something. And look, just because somebody is accused of something does not automatically mean they did it. You will have women that as soon as a woman makes an accusation, of course, they're automatically going to assume that the woman's right. Believe the victims. No, listen to the accusers. Listen doesn't automatically mean that they're telling the truth. Newsflash, men and women both fucking lie. So, to that point, just because he has an allegation or an accusation does not automatically mean that he did it. And anybody that acts like it's automatically fucking true without there being like a day of day in the court of law, etc., like, fuck off. But, but, at some point, you do have to ask, as many times as you get allegations of abuse and sexual misconduct and etc. And you're getting drunk like this. Like, there's something there, right? And at some point in time, you have to say, when is enough enough? When do you decide you don't really need to put up with this shit? When do you decide that it is more risky to keep him than to get rid of him? Because you could get to a place where he puts the company in a really bad spot by continuing to demonstrate really bad behavior and bad choices. So again, I implore everybody, help me understand this. Why is Matt Riddle a thing? Why would anybody like this third-rate dollar store RVD knockoff? The fuck? Bruh, bruh, bruh.